If you've been following my channel for a while, you know I studied mechanical engineering at the University of Waterloo, and if you didn't, well, now you do. At university, I had eight study terms, and in each study term, my university will compare my grades to everyone else in class. They'll do this by giving me a rank at the end of every term, which represents how well I'm doing compared to everyone else in class. For one of my study terms, I was able to rank 8th out of over 150 engineering students. Now, I'm not saying this to flex, but in this video, I'm going to share with you how I was able to do that by sharing 8 tips with you. But before getting into it, realize that you shouldn't base your happiness on your rank because you're worth more than just a number. Just try your best to understand the concepts and work on improving yourself over time. Don't be like this guy. First, we need to understand the engineering pattern. With all the engineering courses you take, you begin to notice a pattern with how all these courses are taught. There's always several concepts that you learn, but each concept usually has its own associated equation that represents it. By the end of the semester, you would have learned a lot of equations and a lot of concepts, and you need to be able to differentiate between them. This pattern relating concept, equation, and practice is very common in all engineering courses, and when I was able to recognize that, my grades went up. I think of engineering as a marathon with short sprints. What I mean by that is you should not get into engineering with the intention of studying hard every single day non-stop. But realize you should take it easy and study a little bit every day and only go hard right before the exam. Here's a little example. Let's say you have 5 exams from October 18th to October 22nd. And let's pretend that today, September 6th, they start of a brand new semester. There's absolutely no point in studying really hard every single day from September 6th all the way until your exams in late October. Instead, plan to study hard the week of October 11th and maybe the week of October 4th as well if you feel like you need to. By the way, when I say study hard, I'm referring to studying during every waking moment of the day except for the times where you're eating or attending mandatory class, of course. When you're studying hard, this is what your daily schedule will look like. If it's a day with classes and it's within a week of one of my exams, this is what my schedule would look like, totaling about 8 hours of studying per day, really just only making time for food and some unwinding at the end of the day or maybe a quick workout. But if it's a day without classes, this is what my schedule would look like, totaling about 12 hours of studying per day, again really only making time for food and a little bit of unwinding at the end of my day. Usually if it's a weekend or if professors were nice enough to cancel class on a weekday, then this is what my daily schedule would look like. Again, keep in mind that these study hard days only happen within a week or two of my exams. It's not something I do every single day because again, it's not sustainable. For one of my four month study terms, I probably spend maybe like 20 or 21 days within that entire term really studying hard. Seven of those days happen right before my midterm exams and about 13 or 14 of those days will happen right before my final exams at the end of the study term. Now, outside of these study hard days, like let's say a random weekday in September, I would probably only really be studying a few hours a day, nothing too crazy, while making time to have a little bit of physical activity and get involved with some passion projects, apply to internships, or just chill. There may even be days where I don't study at all. Now, with a clear schedule in mind that allow you to study throughout the term, let's talk about study techniques that you should be using when you're actually studying. Now, there's a bunch of study techniques I've talked about in the past, but there are two main ones I'm going to briefly highlight in this video, and they're active recall and spatial repetition. Active recall is a specific process of remembering information. Instead of just rereading the textbook or rewriting your notes, you should close your eyes and try to recall information from memory without looking it up online or in your notes. If you can successfully remember what it is you're trying to remember, then you use active recall. If not, that's fine. Just look it up, learn it, and try again. The reason this is so effective is because it converts information from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. The second study technique is spaced repetition, and when you implement it, you forget less over time. Basically, space out the review of certain concepts to be every two or three days or so, instead of just reviewing it once and then forgetting all about it. That way, over time, your memory looks like the green curve instead of the red curve. The fourth thing I do is I would never actually study on the day of my midterms or my exams, and this is just something I did because that's what worked for me. But what I found is if I were to do intense studying on the day of my exam, I'll tend to come across a new concept that confuses me or a new problem that I'm not able to solve. When that happens, I'll usually not have enough time to figure it out before my exam, which then sends me in panic mode and I get really stressed which is the last thing you want to be feeling before an exam. Before an exam, you want to feel chill, calm, and collected. So usually what I do on the day of my exams is take it easy, just review my notes, and that's it. Usually when studying, I'll create cheat sheets that summarize all the concepts and equations that I learned throughout the semester, and I'll combine them all into this one piece of paper, and I'll make sure to review that the day of the exam. And if you want to learn a little bit on how to make your own cheat sheets, check out this video. But yeah, on the day of the exam, I wouldn't try solving any new concepts or reviewing any new material. Again, this is just something that I did that helped me feel calm and relaxed before my exam. It worked for me. It doesn't necessarily have to work for you, but you should give it a shot. A huge thing that helped me was having weekly appointments with my professors and my TAs, where I would go over questions that I had about stuff that was taught earlier that week. 
I'm basically getting one-on-one -on -one help from them, which helped me understand the material better. Obviously, setting up these meetings and actually going to them takes a lot of time and patience. I didn't do it every term, but the terms that I did it were the ones where I ranked the highest and got the highest grades. Now, there isn't a lot of memorization in engineering, but there's still a little bit of memorization that's required. For that reason, using memory techniques is really important, especially mnemonics. A very common example of mnemonics is bed mass, the operational steps of doing math. They help a lot when it comes to memorizing things, so make sure to use them, especially if you have to memorize equations for some exams. So far, the tips I gave were related to scheduling and studying, but let's talk about what you can do during the actual exam to score as high as you can. First, most normal professors try to test you on all the material that will start on the course. So let's say you're doing a particular question and you're not sure what equation or what concept to use, then look at all the previous questions you did and use a concept that you didn't already previously use in another question. Second, when you're doing a question and maybe you're confused right off the bat or you don't even know where to start, just start by writing something down, whether that can be the givens in the question, the unknowns, you know, what you're trying to find, or the equations that you think you might use, just write something down. Once you start putting words and numbers onto paper, more thoughts begin popping in your head, and some of these thoughts can actually help you in finding the solution to that question. Third, show your work. A lot of these engineering courses will have very mathy type questions where there's multiple steps and there's a lot of work that you need to do. So solve the question by making it nice and clear what you're doing and kind of solve it from the perspective of the grader. Try to make their lives easier when they're grading your test or exam. And you can do this by labeling or numbering your steps, explaining where certain equations or certain concepts came from, or boxing your final answer. Doing these small things goes a long way because it makes grading your test or exam a lot easier, which means you're more likely to get part marks on these questions. More often than not, when you're doing long engineering questions, you're going to mess up maybe a negative sign or mess up adding two simple numbers, and your final answer won't actually be correct. But that's fine because if you showed your work, then you're going to get part marks for that question. And most of the time, if your final answer is wrong, you can still get 90% of the marks if you show your work properly and it's somewhat correct. Also, make sure if you don't know how to solve a question is to never leave it blank. Just write something down. You'll get part marks as well. Last thing to pay attention to on your exam to help you score well is to look at your final answer. See if it makes sense because if it doesn't, then you probably made a mistake. If you have enough time to solve it, then go for it. But if you don't, just next to your box answer, write down that it doesn't make sense and what you could potentially do differently in order to solve it to get an answer that makes a little bit more sense. Now, these study and exam techniques are great, but let me shed some light here and share with you the kind of grades you would need in order to rank top 10 in class. On the left here, you see the grade distribution for a study term I took in my second year, and on the right, you see the grade distribution for a study term I had in my third year. In both terms, you notice some similarities and some differences. You can see that most students score between 70 to 89%, so for you to rank in the top 10, you will likely need an overall average between 89 to 92% at least. Obviously, the higher your term average, the higher your rank will be. So if ranking top 10 is one of your goals in a semester, then these are the numbers that you should be aiming for. The crazy thing is, let's say you get an average of 90%, that could put you in the 8th place. But let's say if your grade was maybe 2% lower and your overall average was like 88%, that can take you from the 8th place to like the 30th place in class. When I ranked top 10, school was my only focus and it was the only thing that I was paying attention to. I didn't get top 10 for every term because I started dividing my focus in some of my other terms. I focused on school, but I also spent a lot of time job hunting, working on my resume, and making friends. That's because I realized after I ranked top 10 the first time, I really got nothing out of it. I'd rather use my time in university to meet new people and make some friends and maybe work on getting an internship I really like instead of trying to squeeze every little grade percentage that I can get. Because honestly, at the end of the day, getting really high grades or ranking top 10 in your class really matters more if you plan on pursuing your master's or your PhD after you finish your engineering undergrad. So if that's your goal, then yeah, ranking top 10 should be your priority. But if your goal is to maybe start working after you finish your engineering undergrad, then your grades don't nearly matter as much. Regardless, if being top of your class is a priority to you, or maybe you watched this video because you wanted to explore new study techniques that you can use to help improve your own grades, the eight tips I gave in this video should really help out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace! Thank you.